Hello there guys and welcome to this quick settings guide for X-Plane 11. Many of you have requested that I do a complete settings guide for X-Plane 11 similar to the one I did for X-Plane 10.5 and 10.36 and uh, since X-Plane 11 is still in beta I thought it would be premature to do a complete settings guide for X-Plane 11. Uh, however, I thought that it would be a, a good opportunity for me to share with you my settings and some of the things that I've done to make the sim look even better than it already is. Um, so what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you my Xplain 11 settings and exactly why I have the sliders where they are and I'm going to show you a couple of modifications that I have done uh, in order to uh, improve the visuals of the sim, especially uh, at night with, uh, with the HDR lighting. All right, so let's take a look at the settings. So here are my X-Plane 11 settings. And as you can see, things have changed uh, a little bit from what I've shared with you guys in one of my videos in the past. And before we actually uh, delve into this, um, there is a very good article on the developer.xplane.com website. And it's written by one of the developers of uh, uh, Laminar Research in which he explains exactly what happened to all the tick boxes and the sliders that we're accustomed to in X-Plane 10. So if you are coming from X-Plane 10, I highly recommend that you read this article. I will provide you with a link to it in the description section of the video. And if, you, uh, if you're not interested in reading the article, I will tell you in a nutshell what that article says. So the article says that most of the settings, most of the tick boxes that we're accustomed to in X-Plain um, 10 are by default turned on in X-Plain 11. And the reason why is that Lemonar Research actually found out that all with all these tick boxes ticked, um, that performance is not really affected. So it's not really a bottleneck in terms of performance. And I think it's a good call by Laminar Research to simplify the settings, uh, which were kind of, you know, quite a bit in, in X-Plane 10. And it was very difficult to understand what each one of these settings did. Um, so they've combined a lot of them now in the sliders that you see, and some of them are actually turned on by default. The article also points out to the X-Plane dot uh, preference file. And that file contains things like, um, you know, balloons and fireworks, um, draw frigates and uh, um, submarines and what have you, uh, birds in nice weather, uh, runways follow contour, terrain contour. And the article tells you that if you're really a nerdy person and you want to really, you know, play with these files, you can definitely go to the xplane.preference file and tweak the settings to your liking. So, what I've done, uh, you've, as you can see, the visual effects is now ma on maximum, HDR plus SSAO. Uh, texture quality is on maximum without compression and anti-aliasing is on 2X SSAA plus FXAA. Number of wor world objects is on high Reflection details is still turned off because there is an issue with this. Uh, draw parked aircraft is unticked and draw sh shadow on scenery is unticked. Okay, so let me tell you what I've done and why I've done it. So I went from the this setting here, which is HDR high on high to HDR with SSAO. And what I've noticed is that the difference between these two settings is quite subtle. So you can't really see it, but if you do want to see what it does to the scene, I recommend that you um, do a screen capture with SSAO and then a screen capture without it, and you will be able to see that there are some fine details into the scene, mainly on the objects that makes it, uh, it kind of adds a little bit of more shadow uh, to some parts um, uh, for example, 
the wheels, the uh, objects, the ground services, the buildings, uh, it makes things look a little better, uh, in my opinion. And it's worth doing it. It's worth the frames that you lose, which you can compensate by reducing anti-aliasing to two times SSAA and FXAA. Now, the normal settings that I have is right here. So 4X uh, SSAA and FXAA. And what I've seen is that it is exactly the same amount of frames I get with this setting here and this slider going back here. If I keep the sliders here, so if with this settings, with everything else the same, I would get about 28 frames uh, on average. But if I move the slider back, I will get 48 frames. Now, I will get also 48 frames if, if this was on HDR and this slider was on 4X SSA, uh, SSAA and FXAA. So again, guys, it's really up to you. I mean, if you want to, if the shimmer is a real problem for you, especially if you're running the sim on a 1080p monitor, uh, shimmering can be a real issue. And it is a kind of a, you know, it's a, it's a put off as far as I'm concerned uh, when, when you see the shimmer, especially when you're traveling uh, during daylight and the skies are clear, then the shimmers are become, you know, they become very, uh, very prominent and, and they're kind of, you know, they're annoying. Um, but at night or when, even if you fly daylight, if there is just a little bit of haze or if there is some fog in the area that you're flying, then shimmering is, is reduced. Um, uh, it's not as prominent as it is in, in clear uh, and uh, daylight weather. Uh, so you can safely go to 2X SSAA and FXAA uh, with, with really getting the same performance and moving this slider all the way to, to max. All right, so in terms of texture quality, um, I've set it to maximum with no compression. Now, as you can see, um, this will place very heavy burden on your GPU. Um, so if you're, uh, if you're running even the 1080, I do not recommend that you do um, maximum with no compression. Uh, always set this to uh, you know, this slider here to maximum. Uh, the reason I have it on no compression is just simply because the card can take it. And I think that things look sharper uh, when uh, no compression is applied to the texture quality. Um, so as you can see here, there's nine, uh, 9,441, that's about nine gig of uh, textures currently loaded. And uh, so that's really pushing the, uh, that's really pushing the the Titan X. Uh, you know, it, it's nearing nearing the limit, which is 12, uh, 12 MB. And I've been to a, I think the largest uh, scene that I've uh, encountered uh, with Ortho uh, for XP scenery uh, was about ten thousand, so ten gig. Uh, so that's really above what a ten eighty can do uh, in terms of VRAM. All right, so I think enough said about this. Let me tell you uh, the number of rolled objects. Now, if you recall in X Plane 10, and if you're you know kind of migrating from X Plane 10 to X Plane 11, we used to have a slider for the trees, slider for number of rolled objects, and then the, the number of streets, uh, and then the traffic. So we had four sliders. All those four sliders are now really in one slider. And by the way, there is a Lewis script that will allow you to tweak everything, including, you know, the, uh, uh, including the number of vehicles, uh, the number of trees, uh, just about everything. Um, but I, I tend not to use uh, Fly with Lua um, at, at this point because there are some issues uh, with X Enviro. So I'm I'm using X Enviro and hence I do not use uh, Fly with Lua. But um, you can think of this as a slider that would actually 
increase everything. It will increase the number of objects that includes your trees. It includes your number of streets and it increases the number of buildings all together in one slider. So one tick in uh, to the right will actually increase many things. So you have to watch for your frame rate. I found out personally that I've tried uh, putting this on high, but then it has to come at the expense of other things. So if you want to go to maximum, you can definitely do that, but then you need to reduce, start reducing um, probably your visual effects, maybe to HDR and keep this at 2x and maybe you'll be fine. If you want to enable draw shadows on scenery, you need to reduce that even further in order to enjoy you know, the, uh, the shadows being casted from the world objects around you in the sim. So I hope that this is uh, useful and informative for you guys. And there's a couple of things that I want to show you that I have done to improve the visuals of the sim. So one of the modifications I've done to uh, X-Plane 11 to further enhance it is the HDR lighting. And as you can see, I have white lights here on the highway or freeway, motorway, whatever you want to call it. And the lights in general are brighter, they're more crisp and they're more defined. And let me tell you, it's looking absolutely phenomenal. Um, and what I'm using is a, uh, is a modification to the lights.txt file created by, um, let's see here, by Forkboy2. And this is the Fahil HDR lighting upgrade version two. Uh, thank you very much, Forkboy2, for creating this file because I think it really looks phenomenal. And what you'll see here is that it comes with two uh, versions. There's a version for the, um, for the US, uh, so the highway lights, okay? And there is a version for Europe. The, um, and it says here, this version has no LED lights, instead uses more sodium, mercury, vapor, and metal uh, halide result is, uh, is a lot more orange than white, okay? So this one is more orange for, um, for Europe, and this one is more white for the US. So once you download the files from the Explain org, you'll go to Resources, and then Bitmaps, and then go to World, and then go to Lights. Now, as you can see, I have three files here, all called lights.txt. This one is light.txt.eu, and this is lights.txt.old. This is the original file with, that came with Xplain 11. This is the EU for my flights in Europe, and this is the uh, file that I'm using now, which is loaded in the sim, which is for the US. Uh, and the way you do this, you just rename the file, add a dot, and then add old uh, to your previous um, Xplain 11 file, and then just paste both files in here and make the lights.txt will be the active file. And normally, when I rename this, uh, if I want to use the EU file, then I rename this to lights.txt.us and this one to lights.txt. And then this becomes the active file. If you don't like any of these two and you want to revert back to your explain file, simply go here, delete those two files and rename this to lights.txt and you're good to go. Another thing that I'd like to share with you guys is the airport environment pack provided by Mr. 6X. And of course, I'll provide you with a link to it in the description section of the video. Essentially, this is a complete in airport environment pack. It includes the taxiway markings, um, the signage, uh, as you can see, a high definition uh, taxi, uh, taxi markings here and the runways look absolutely phenomenal. As you can see, the runway as well uh, looks uh, pretty crisp. It looks very realistic, and you've got both concrete and asphalt uh, runways in this pack. I highly recommend it. It's, uh, it really enhances the airport environment. So if you guys don't have it, uh, the link is provided in the um, description section of the video, and it is absolutely free of charge. All right, folks, uh, this is pretty much what I wanted to share with you guys uh, today. I hope that this was an informative and useful video. If you have any questions, as usual, 
please post them in the comment section below. Until next time, please take care of yourselves and each other. I will see you all very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye bye for now.